Hi, my name is Nolan, and I really enjoyed this book. It's two, it's um through third, and uh, I'd say about six, and it's called the Mismantle Chronicles, book one. Um, now you sort of get to know the characters and Urchin. Um, his name is Urchin of the Falling Stars. He's one of the main characters, um, and he won through. Pretty much all of him, he goes on adventures, and um, he just does a lot of stuff, and he pretty much saves a lot of people, and a lot of things happen. Um, it's by uh, M.I. McAllister. Uh, it's a good mystery, and you just don't know what's going to happen. It just pops out, and... My favorite character is uh, probably Urchin of the Red and Stars because he's the main character and he saves everybody. All the people in this book, all of them are actually talking animals. So, um, and all, m m most of them just go on journeys or do really important stuff. For It's sort of a uh, night castle old time but instead of humans it's talking animals and there are uh, um mice badgers and moles and that type of things my name is nolan and it's the miss mantle chronicles book one by m.i callister Hi, my name is Keeva, and I would like to tell you about a book called The Thirteen Treasures. And is it about? And it is about a girl named Tanya who can see fairies, but not like the fairies we imagine, like Disney fairies. They're actually pretty mean. So, and they cast spells on Tanya, making her do all sorts of stuff, like break things, and they make and they make it look like it's her fault. But her mother's fed up with all that stuff because she can't see fairies. So she sends Tanya to live with her grandmother in their mansion named Elves Den Manor. Tanya meets a boy that's her age, which is 13. And um, together they learn about a mystery about a girl who vanished in the woods 50 years ago. And as they learn more about the mystery, Tanya finds herself dangerously close to vanishing into the fairy realm forever. It is, again, The 13 Treasures by Michelle Harrison is, is the first of a trilogy. I hope you will read this book. My name is Adam. I'm going to tell you about The Legend of Spud Murphy by Eoin Colfer. It's about um, two boys Will and Marty Woodman, they're kind of forced to spend the summer in a library, but it's like um, the librarian is um, Spud Murphy. She's kind of a legend, and she's known for if kids kind of get in trouble at the library, she'll, she has a spud gun, and she'll basically just shoot them in the face with a spud gun. Um, so everyone's like all scared, and nobody wants to go in the library. Um, but they're kind of forced to. And so they get this little carpet in the kids' section that they're not allowed to go off of, basically. Um, and they get a few books, and, you know, um, it's kind of just about them trying to uh, survive their time at the library, like sneaking out and trying to get other books or trying to, you know, uh, get comfortable with this living space. Um, so that's kind of why I like it. It's just like, um, I guess it's like a survival book, but it's not really about surviving. It's just about like um, coping with the rules. So that's why I like it. Um, my name is Adam. This is The Legend of Spud Murphy by Eoin Colfer. Hi, my name's Stuart, and I'm going to be talking about So Be It by Sarah Weeks. I like this book because it's about a little girl who um, is 
live with her mom who has like a disability and she wants to figure out what this word means that her mom always says. She always has to do everything else because her um, neighbor is takes care of her and she um, doesn't like going outside because she's scared of going outside. So she has to go to the store and earn all her money. My favorite character is Heidi because that because she um, she she does all of the things that her mom would do, and she kind of takes care of her mom when she, her mom's supposed to take care of her. Other kids might like this book because they might feel like they're in her sh shoes like how she's feeling and stuff. And this is So Be It by Sarah Weeks. My name is Mary Bounds, and this is one of my favorite books, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. Um, I like it because it's, um, I guess, a good read for all ages. And it's a page turner. It's really funny and cool. And I just think that a lot of people should read it and they should all know what it's like. My favorite part of the book is when they have to go into the dark forest and Harry finds the dead unicorn, which it's really tenseful, so you're wondering what's going to happen next. This is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. My name is John Bounds, and um, my favorite book, one of my favorite books is The Infinity Ring by James Dashner. I think um, a lot of people would like it because I know a lot of people like sci-fi and... Um, as well as sci-fi, it's also a time traveling book. So it's also in the past and the future. I think um, people would like it because um, I know that I really liked my social studies this year at school. So um, I think a lot of people also like that. So um, if you like social studies, this is a good book because you learn about the um, Americas in this book. Like, and Christopher Columbus is in this book as well. The plot is that um, there's a huge group called the um, SQ who um, want to have the world for themselves, I guess. And so these, uh, so I think three characters, I can't remember one of the characters' names. I'm pretty sure it was Dak and Sarah had to go back in time using this um, time machine called the Infinity Ring to stop this SQ from making it so that they had the world <laughs> in their hands. So they um, found a lot of historians on the way who tried to help them um, get all the breaks in time fixed. This is The Infinity Ring by James Dashner.